Uh, let's see, back in the San Gabriel's with Matt. And we are, uh, it's about two in the morning, huh? Yeah. <laughs> about two in the morning. Yep, just about. And we just got here because we uh, left our friend Eric's wake. If you are a Southern California backpacker, you may have crossed paths with Eric. He's a great guy. And uh, passed away about two weeks ago, I guess. Week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, cancer. But uh, we left his wake. And a lot of backpackers and hikers showed up to show their respect as well as friends, family, co-workers. We are camping at the spot where uh, we came directly from the uh, viewing. He will be cremated soon. But we are camping at the site where a lot of us met Eric. He came to a invite to a camp out cook off right here this is where we met him and uh, where we start our weekend backpacking trip um, went into the thing pretty pretty down I'd been down for a week or so you know really hit hard he went quick but uh the mood changed didn't it Matt yeah. uh, once everybody got to talking about his sense of humor and his adventures and the things we said and did and really yeah we started laughing and sat around a good couple yeah. extra hours uh, just talking about him and things we'd seen and done really lightened up the mood and I think that's what he would have wanted there's a slideshow showing of him with a, a lot of pictures and on one of the pictures I was wearing a schmog just like the one Matt's got on just like the one I have on but it was a uh, olive drab one and I'm all I remember that, that was that fish fork. And I go, yeah, that's the schmog that <laughs> soon after that photo was taken, Eric and I, uh, well, a few of us were going down uh, North Fork and my schmog caught fire. <laughs> I pulled the schmog off, or Steve pulled the schmog off to put it out, I guess, and so a boiling pot of water came off my stove and hit the ground. The boiling water went right up, got me right in the face, right in my open eyes, all over my arms and hands, and not a single blister. And I had really bad hay fever right before that. And <laughs> after that, my eyes cleared up. <laughs> the water, the water just uh, cleared my eyes up, so. But, um, you know, it lifted. It lifted the spirits of everybody there, and uh, we will never forget Eric. Never forget that guy, huh? We'll be hiking for years to come and remember something he said or something he did. And every little spot in this mountain range, I can remember him doing something or saying something or... But this is where we're hiking. Let us get set up. <coughs> so although it's not the perfect setup tonight, for some reason this uh, underquilt's not hugging correctly. But it's made for Hennessy. And I have the British hammock. The mats over there, let's see. The mats over there. There's my stuff there in the trash bag. I got this log right here with my boots. Boots hung up over there. Over yonder on the mesa. <laughs> so here's Matt's hammock. He has like the uh, slap strap type set up here. 
Z light. Uh, sleeping bag. I have the whoopee slings stick. Is that that British hammock? Tell you about. Set myself up a log here. I had my boots on there. The camera was in with me. Uh, jacks are better. Hammock gear over quilt. My pants, headlight, schmog, jacket, whoopee sling, and the campground. The last time I slept at this campground, I was with Matt's mom and dad. Matter of fact, your mom and dad were camped right there. This whole place was filled. It was a group camp. We had this whole thing filled. But uh, the last time I was in this this uh, canyon it was with the guy from Long Beach. He'll be joining us later today, I believe. But um, an acorn tree upriver, and another one downriver, and another one up another river. I gathered a bunch of acorns, I processed them, and I have the processed acorns in the, um, in the bag, food bag, and uh, I'm going to make a few things with the recipes. I'm going to make some acorn pancakes, I'm going to make some acorn, I had some acorn coffee, and I'm going to make an acorn battered trout. Those acorns were gathered in this canyon and in the West Fork also. These are all oak trees. Some big ones. But by far the uh, best producing acorn trees, there are some really good ones up the West Fork about the three and a half, four mile mark. Some really nice ones right off the road, but the best producing acorn trees in the entire range right now are up at the Crystal Lake campground. You can just walk up there, day hike up there, and they are just, the ground is just totally littered with them. Now most of those that have been there for a long time are going to have worms. But while you're sitting there, these things are dropping. As soon as they drop, boom, just grab them, grab them, grab them. And they're huge. I'm gonna make a whole video on things that I'm gonna make with them, but right here you'll see pancakes. I took a picture of the recipe um, that I used for the acorns and for the acorn pancake. You get acorn flour. I'll show you a close-up of this. Half a cup. Half a cup heaping all-purpose or bread flour. Half a cup of acorn flour. These are used acorns processed from this canyon, this very canyon. Two teaspoons of sugar in here also. Um, two teaspoons of baking powder in here. One half teaspoon of salt. One cup of whole milk. One glug of oil. And one egg. I'm going to mix that together and make a few acorn pancakes. And I've got maple syrup, Aunt Jemima maple syrup mixed with honey. This is going to bring some blueberries too, but I'll be doing that in this MSR skillet with Matt's stove. And 
my snow peak. Uh, I'll be making the acorn coffee. So we'll get everything started and then give you a look at it. Okay. If you saw my uh, video where I went to Telephoto Joe's uh, Spooktacular Camp, you will see that I gathered, it turned out to be 42 and a half pounds of acorns. Now, this is a small acorn. But uh, it's light, shake, a little bit loose, it's broken loose from the sides. 100% chance, 100% uh, positive these have worms in them. You get them when they're still green, greenish brown, where they're solid and uh, the caps are still on them most of the time they hit. Sometimes when they hit they fall off, but you gotta get the fresh ones, throw them in a bucket and if they float, you've got a worm. Get rid of those. But the finished processed acorn meal looks like this. This is a smaller batch I made from acorns out of here where I only got like nine and a half, nine and a half pounds, 10 pounds maybe. And after I shelled them, got the bad ones out and everything, I only ended up with about two pounds of acorn. Uh, a lot of them had worms, but two, two pounds of acorns. But out of the 42 pounds, I got like 20 something, 20 plus pounds of uh, acorn meal. It's leaching right now at home. The whole leaching process is online. We got butter, maple syrup, and honey. Got the raspberries and the blueberries. That would have been nice to put on top. Too bad they're not, it's not the season that we got. Yeah. If you want to add this uh, coffee over here, add the coffee and stir it up. Then just let it set for about five minutes. It's actually an acorn coffee substitute. There's no caffeine in it. I did mine in this MSR skillet. Things been through, I just been through wars and I, it, it just keeps them going. It's a great little pan, pretty light. I also have this Heath that Matt has here. Heath or Keith? Keith. Keith. Yeah. Okay. There's the pancakes from the teeth. Yeah. And we got some butter on them. Here comes the syrup and honey. Yeah. Oh yeah, I gotta shake yeah. this. Yeah. Syrup and honey. Here, do you put some syrup on yours? As much as you want, man. Dude, that acorn mix is good. Taste that. That is good. <laughs> what else did you put in there? Uh, I'll show you afterwards. I read it all. Here's the acorn coffee. Substitute, no caffeine in it. Uh, you want to use this coffee cup here, Matt? You want to use this one? Mm -hmm. There you go, that's about equal. Have a seat, dude. Thanks, Have a seat right there.
Man, those are good, dude. How are they, man? Thank you. They're really good. They are. They're really, really good. Look at this. Acorn pancakes. With acorns from this range. From this, this canyon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would have been better if we could have had quail eggs instead of a chicken egg. To mix with it. <laughs> and some honey found. There used to be a... A tree down here where you know where we come across that second crossing and uh the new trail goes off to the left the trail used to go to the right there used to be a honey tree back there years ago uh beehive was in it, this tree and there was a honeycomb in it it's got like you can taste the crunchiness of the acorn nut Man, this is the best batch I've made so far. And I think the next one's going to be even better because all those ones I got from the Halloween camp, those are some big acorns, dude. The acorn meat was almost as big as that piece of butter there. Try your acorn coffee, dude. Cheers. Here's to Eric, man. It's to you, Eric. Pretty good. That's the best batch of acorn coffee I've made too. <laughs> How many times have you done this? I've done the coffee three times. I've done the pancakes twice, but the last time I had barely any pancake left, and it was a different recipe and didn't call for an egg. And the egg made all the difference in the world, holding them together. This is a nice camp. We're getting out of here late, but I don't know. We just we're not in a rush. Just think about old times. Um. Meeting Eric here about, about five years ago, I believe. The day I met Eric here was the last day I hiked with my good friend, my hiking buddy, long time hiking buddy, Frank. He got some dizzy spells down there and fell and he hit his head and he never regained his equilibrium. Uh, about a year or so after that, before he even recovered, he had a stroke. And now he's lost most of his vision and uh, his equilibrium. It's gone. So uh, the day I met Eric, one guy joins me on the trail, another guy left on the trail. Both at the same camp. Cooking up some shrimp and vegetables. And over here we got some rice going. Nice. And here's our some clouds are moving north. Caught a few trout here in my day. This leopard seal rock. From down there, it looks like a leopard seal. Right on, huh? Veggies. <laughs> Shrimp and vegetables. Rice. A little bit spicy, huh? It's good.
That is good. That comes in a bag at Steeter Brothers. Shrimp and vegetables. All the spices and everything. West Fork of Bear Creek. Not West Fork. The West Fork of Bear Creek. And there are still cherries. Fumbled it. Delicious no, holly cherries. Here's what we're going with tonight. Uh, Joseph, you brought your tent. Now you. No, I brought the fly for the tent and the poles, but I did not bring the tent. He thought he grabbed the bug net, but he grabbed the tie. Who wins the rookie? Rookie of the year. <laughs> rookie <right>? move. <laughs> so, so he'll be cowboy camping right here. Man, again, going with the hammock and the thermal light. And I'm going with my hammock and my hammock gear. War bonnet, my war bonnet tarp. I brought it, I might as well use it. Pitched a little high, yes. But uh, don't expect a lot of rain. Don't expect any rain, not a lot of wind. Just pretty much for warmth. Mm. I got the hammock pitched kind of high to uh, stay. I don't want it to sag down and hit these sharp things. Some acorn coffee. Is Indian food almost done? Ooh. Waking up in her camouflage. Look at my boots. Ooh. On my tripping pole. Yeah, woo! <laughs> <laughs> That was a nice camp. It's been a good weekend. No voices last night. But we just passed out, fell asleep. I, seven o'clock. <laughs> seven o'clock we were in, we were, we were sitting around falling asleep, so we fell asleep. And How was that room we got right there? It was great. I can really feel the difference when I open this zipper, this net. Feel the cool air come in. But uh, seven o'clock, we went to sleep, huh? Yeah, before eight, for sure. What time is it now? Seven. <laughs> Four, Twelve hours sleep. <laughs> but we hiked all day yesterday. What'd you say when I woke up, Matt? How was that? How was that house? How was your room? <laughs> he goes, how was the sleep in your room? Coffee, bacon, eggs. What'd you make over there? Oh, I just had oatmeal and hot chocolate. Uh, and Matt's got some diced up apple. 
Oatmeal. And yeah. you can add some oatmeal to it. I have a story about that apple. If I, I'll try to remember the story, and if so, I'll make a separate video of it in honor of a friend of mine from Fair who passed away. He was known as the apple guy. <laughs> What's that, like black seed or something you put in there? Uh, Cheers. Chia seed. We're backpacking up here in the mountains and I have the new rod by pinfishingrods.com. It's got the same look as their original pin rod, just a lot bigger. But uh, I'll show you the difference. Let me put it together. It's got a regular size spinning reel, regular foot. But I believe it can hold the small ones too. So when you're hiking up small streams and rivers, these rods collapse completely down. You can hold them with your trekking poles. Lure on there. Just extend it and fish. Claps it, move on. I don't think this trail's been used in decades. This is almost all poison oak. No choice. Man down. Whoa. Whoa. Man back up. Look at this. Something's been laying here for quite a while. Quail. Mm. Multiple quail. I can hear the river down there. Okay, there's a pen rod. Here's how easy it is. This is a feral model named after my channel. and ready to go. I doubt this area's been fished in 20 years. If there's any trout here. Look up. Look at that dude. First. 
first cast. <laughs> Look at that. Here's my tackle box I brought with me. And I switched over to a little mini jig. Look at that big hole, hole down there. They call it a big one. That's a nice one, huh? Look at that. Nice one, huh? Yeah. What do we say? Pin fishing rods, Sparrow. Pinfishingrods.com, Sparrow Rod. Awesome. Great for backpacking, guys. Beautiful. Okay, 